Alright, welcome back everybody, this is GnomeDroid here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Arch Linux in VirtualBox in just 10 minutes with a super easy and successful guide. Now I remember how difficult and long my first Arch install was, and I want to share this super easy method with you guys. Let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and go into your browser. So I'm going to go ahead and download the uh, Arch Linux install ISO. So you're just going to type in Arch Linux um, into Google. And from here, if you go to their website, now uh, I will link this in the description, but I recommend just uh, Googling it because if the website changes or anything. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we can go ahead to the top right corner here where there's a download uh, link. And from here, you see here there's the ISO. So, um, depending on what device you have, now this supports 32-bit and 64-bit. Now, I remember it did support i6, uh, 86 as it did say before here, but it stopped doing that now. So you want to go ahead and find the closest mirror to you for the server for the correct ISO file. Um, this is just to make downloads quicker. So you just want to find your country here, just for the quickest download. I'll just click on the first one, and you want to go ahead and go for the .iso file, uh, not not the sig or torrent file, just the first one .iso. Make sure it's this one. Now we can go ahead and save the file uh, to our downloads and wait for the download to complete. You can go ahead and open up VirtualBox. Uh, I have it. I have a tutorial on how to do that uh, in Windows. I will go ahead and link that to you. Otherwise, I can put a tutorial on how to install. VirtualBox in Linux down below. Once you have downloaded the ISO file for Arch Linux so that we can uh, boot into Arch Linux, you guys are going to go ahead and uh, follow this link here. It's going to be in the video description as everything always is and always be sure to check that for all of my videos. Now um, I didn't make this so i got to give credit to uh, Henry, I'll link his uh, YouTube channel in the video description. I didn't make this, all credit goes to him and this is a really 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 good guide so you guys can uh, go ahead and follow along with it. And on the other side, keep VirtualBox open. So go ahead and click on New to make a new machine. Uh, name the virtual machine, whatever you want. I'm going to call it Arch. And uh, you can see it will switch to Arch Linux automatically. Make sure this is on 64-bit Arch Linux. Click on Next. Here you can give it as much RAM as you want. I would recommend in the screen area. I'm gonna, so I'm going to go ahead and give this virtual machine about 3 gigs, a little under half. Uh, and then we can go ahead and create a new hard disk. Uh, VDI, just keep clicking next. Uh, here you can give it as much space as you want. 8 gigs I think is fine uh, as the minimum, but you could, uh, if you want to actually make this a full virtual machine or something with lots of desktop environments or something, you might want to bump that up to 20. I just don't have that much space. So now once we're done, you'll see we have your virtual machine here. Make sure it's selected. And your optical drive option in storage, you want to go ahead and choose disk image. And now from here, you can go to the file you downloaded, and here it is, the Arch Linux ISO that we downloaded at the start. Go ahead and click on Open. Now just click on Start. Click on Boot Arch Linux, just first option. Press on Enter. Now as you can see, my mouse is, uh, it goes in and out of the virtual machine, but if you click and it stays in and you can't take your mouse out, press the right control key and hold it down and you can move your mouse out. So begin by making sure you're connected to the internet with your virtual machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, ping 8.8.8.8. Now if you're getting a response back, that means you are connected to the internet. However, if you just get a message about no internet or something, you can go ahead and work out this uh, DHCPCD issue on here. But if it's in a virtual machine, it should work flawlessly. Now we can go ahead and partition the disk. LSB OK. This will show us our current volumes. Now we can go to CF disk slash dev slash SDA. On the prompt, uh, go to DOS, the arrow keys, go to new, and we're going to make partitions as it says on the left. So on the free space, you want to click on new and make the boot partition. You can make it uh, 100 meg, you can make it as big as you want. I'm going to go with 3 gigabytes. I'm going to make sure it's primary and move over to the left with your left arrow key. 
and press enter on bootable. Then with the down arrow key, you want to uh, again hit enter on new. Uh, this is going to be our swap partition. Uh, I'm going to make it one gigabyte. Make sure it's primary. And here in on the right arrow once, we can enter on type. Change it to Linux swap. And now on the free space again on new. And make this the remaining size. Primary. Now we can move with the right arrow key to the right button. Click on enter. Type yes. And now you can click enter. And click on quit. Make fs dot ext4 slash dev slash sda1. Now we can mk swap slash dev slash sda2. And now swap on slash dev slash sda2. Now what you've just done here is because uh, before we have just created as our second partition we made a swap partition now um, and because products have better hardware you don't really need to use a bit of your hard drive for RAM um, but what we've done here is we've just said to the operating system partition here I want you to use this for this and make the specific file system on that and this is just switched on the swap file and you can turn it off at any point with just swap off make fs dot ext4 ext4 is a file system that Linux mainly uses um, and we're just formatting each partition we created with ext4 now we can go ahead and mount the file systems slash dev slash sda1 slash mount enter now we can do mkdir or make directory slash mount slash home now you can go ahead and go to mount slash dev slash sda3 slash mount slash home and this is just mounting the different partitions to their different attributes go ahead and type in pacman dash sy right now once that's done we can go pacman dash s s stands for sync reflector and now y and enter now we can go to uh, write the command on the left, so I believe that's a 1, if it's not we'll go ahead and change it back later. And yeah, so that was the wrong argument, so the 1 is not correct, it's uh, meant to be in L, here, yeah, like that. So we go to pack strap dash i slash mount base base slash devil. Now at this prompt, just press enter, this will uh, say all of them, let's press enter again, and y, and then enter. And now, as you can see, you have 250 meg to download, so let's just wait for this to install. To configure your correct language, you're going to go to nano slash etsy slash locale dot gen. Here, the commands are listed like this with the hashtag. The hashtag is a comment, um, if you guys know about coding you can add comment into your code and it won't be read as a piece of code uh, if you put a hashtag in front of it in this uh, language so you can go ahead and find your locale and en will be for english and now i'm actually going to do here engb because i'm in great britain and gb but you can also uh, do uh, en us click on control o to write out press on enter and now control x I'm going to change this to GB. We have our language and location. Next, let's set the time zone. So You can see we have a bunch of uh, places. So you want to see where you where you are. Let's so choose your uh, your zone info, and but you're gonna write it straight after this. I'm gonna change mine to Greenwich to Europe Greenwich, as so you guys can see. However, if this doesn't work, then you can go ahead and change it later with a GUI.
And now we can go ahead and uncomment the line that is specified. Uh, it's here down the bottom, so you can go ahead and just delete the hashtags. Now, Control O, Enter, Control X to write out. The name of your device is sort of the, um, it's like the name, you want to do Echo, and then the name of your, what you want your PC to be called. I'm going to call it Droid. can set the password so pass wd is the command and now you can write new password so i'm gonna i don't know i'll do a random password now keep in mind your password won't appear while you're typing it so you won't get anything so it looks like you're not typing anything now we can add our user now at the end of this you can write the name of your user i'm gonna call it known to pass WD and the name of your user, so gnome again, and I'm going to do a password for that. Now your password before was your root password. Uh, and here it is, as you can see it's there. It's under the user privilege specification. Uh, and now we can do the same thing, control O, enter, control X. Arch and uh, un untick the uh, ISO file so it doesn't boot into the uh, bootable image again. And here we are. Now we are into uh, our Arch Linux system. Do screen fetch. We can now see that we are running Arch Linux in this virtual machine, and it is fully installed. We can now uh, proceed to install a desktop. If you ever have an issue, look on the wiki. This is an incredibly, incredibly well-made sort of wiki about everything about this operating system, and you can find anything on here. So on archlinux.org, you can go to wiki, and I just searched uh, desktop environment. Uh, and from here, you have all of the desktop environments that you can officially install. And here, it will tell you which package it is. So, you can so this is an example for the GNOME desktop, how to install it. Here, for pacmanager-s, you just install... Mate and Mate X, as it says in the installation here. There, these two packages. By X face, you go to installation, and you'll see that you have how to install the XFC4. So if you just follow the installation, but it's simple uh, because it's just it just tells you the packages that there are to install. But uh, you can always just Google, this and people will just you can just uh, see from websites very easily what the exact packages are. And yeah, as you can see here, sudo pacman f64. And that's it. And you might need window managers like LXDM uh, to for your lock screen. But in general, this is really, really simple. It's not actually difficult. And with because I haven't, I'm not going to tell you, give you guys a specific example because you want there's so many Linux desktops you can choose from. But you can choose whichever one you want, and it's really easy to find out the exact commands to install it on the internet. Now, again, if there are any queries, comment down below, and I will help you. First thing we have to do before we actually install any um, that uh, any desktop environment is to install a graphical server. Now, if you want to use Wayland, uh, then I think you need to uh, look that up for yourself because uh, that's more advanced thing to do, and it's not. Uh, it's, it's quite separate, but Excel will work very fine for everyone. So from here. Finally, um, uh, here if you're using uh, VirtualBox, you can go ahead and follow these commands just as you have done. Uh, it's really, really simple. You know, you guys have just done this with ba sort of the base system, so you guys know how to follow along to all these instructions. So if you're not using VirtualBox, you can go ahead and follow here, and installing the fallback driver. And then for an NVIDIA card, you have to install these uh, two packages here. Now here's an example of how to install a GNOME desktop. The uh, commands and I'm going to be installing XFC4 as my desktop. I actually spend that much time actually configuring this to be like a full desktop environment and you have to start from scratch with all your configurations but that's pretty simple and straightforward. The uh, sort of the keyboard layout as we were saying before, um, the layout of the keyboard we can change it, uh, we can change the uh, date and time, we can change 
all these sort of things. Uh, Alright, well, thank you guys very much for watching. This video took so much time to make, um, and I, because I want to bring you guys to, because uh, this will teach you to learn Linux, how the Linux system works, and also create the system that you've made yourself. And uh, if you guys really, if this video helped you and it was good, please click that like button, please subscribe, and also uh, to stay tuned of future videos, and also comment down below any questions you have, and always check the video description. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.